if we get the majority of the population, 80, 90% of the population wearing masks by roughly day 50 after the outbreak in some locale, that we can drastically cut down on the rate of spread and we can bring it down to levels where it buys us the time to not only keep the hospital load from uh, getting swamped, but also to develop the treatments uh, and hopefully the vaccines. So 80% of people in a given group, if they wore masks, it would be 12 times fewer that would get sick compared to if nobody wore them. How did you come up with this prediction? What we did was we took the standard baseline model in epidemiology, which is called the SEIR model, uh, and we fit the parameters to the data that we were getting from London at the time of the study. And so working from that, we uh, approximated uh, the date of the outbreak uh, in London and looked at what would happen 50 days after that and 75 days after that. And so what we found was that if we just run the baseline numbers, uh, you get the standard curve that everybody around the world gets for this. And then we compared that to the case where if by day 50, you had 80% of the population masked up. And we found that that uh, was still uh, enough to hugely lower the rate of spread. And then we compared it against these other two scenarios. What would happen if you had 75, uh, if you waited till day 75 before you masked up the population? And that was too late uh, because the virus would have spread already to too much of the population to do anything about slowing that down. Can you tell me a little bit more about the technology you use to confirm that masks work? We also built uh, this new, in, what's called an individual agent-based model, uh, borrowing from other ideas from AI. So in AI, there's a long history of modeling uh, large numbers of intelligent agents who are wandering around in a space and they meet each other as we do and they interact with each other. Uh, and this model is very useful for certain applications in AI and in economics and so forth. They're, the systems are very complex. If you model, actually, there's a, there's a bunch of individuals and they're walking around and this individual today decides that he's going to go and buy a cake in the bakery. Uh, uh, on the spur of the moment. And because of that decision, you get uh, a whole bunch of chain effects. It's like a butterfly effect mm -hmm. uh, where, uh, you know, because he's in the bakery, he meets a neighbor and then the neighbor goes home and ends up spreading the infection to a whole cluster in his apartment block. The other nice thing about it is that it's very visualizable. And so we, we actually uh, built a visual simulator uh, based on this where anybody can go to the Mask Sim website Mm -hmm. and see for themselves playing with those sliders that you played with. Uh, you can see the people walking around in their space. Uh, you can see how they infect each other. Uh, they go through incubation periods and then they become infectious. I want to turn from the science side to the human side. You know, there are some people out there who are against face coverings, at least for COVID-19. What would you say to them? You have to uh, just adopt a decision theory approach. You, you have to say, what is my best bet? And you have to calculate the expected utilities and the expected costs. Mm -hmm. And you think about that for a moment. We don't have certainty on any of the other interventions that we're using. We don't have certainty on social distancing. How, how much physical distance do you need? Some places say it's one meter, some places say it's two meters. Some studies say, oh, it's much further than that. We don't know. Does that mean that the world is not implementing social distancing? No, of course not. It makes total sense to do social distancing while we're trying to figure this out because we've got to mitigate the risk. Mm. And then same thing goes for testing and tracing. We don't have any good hard numbers yet on how effective these are at slowing down the rate. Well, so the question to me is, in that case, why is it that the data in, you know, that is being collected in the West um, and that goes for everything from, you know, say Johns Hopkins data, WHO data, and so forth. Uh, it's listing the social distancing interventions, the testing interventions, the contact tracing interventions. Why does it not even list the universal masking intervention? Universal masking has been 100% correlated with the locales that have successfully suppressed the exponential spread of the virus. Um, not only Hong Kong, but also South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, uh, uh, as well as the Czech Republic and Slovakia and Slovenia. Mm. Uh, whereas if you look at the converse, 
almost 100% of the locations that have not adopted universal masking and have been hit by an outbreak have failed to suppress the, epi uh, the exponential spread of the epidemic. Well, Professor Dakai, thank you so much for putting the science behind, you know, why we need to wear masks. Thank you. Thank you, Lee.